welcome to another episode of Hard Factor. It is Tuesday, May 25th, 2021, episode number 696 of Hard Factor. I'm Will. We got Mark, Wes, Pat, and Bubba is back producing today. Full crew in the house. How's it going, boys? How's your Tuesday? FC, are you with me? Full crew. Mm -hmm. Uh, Speaking of the full crew, a show that's not going to have a full crew, half a pack with Wes. Get your submissions for what you want to hear on Wes's solo project, half a pack with Wes, submitted via DM by this Thursday. If you want those ideas considered in the show, in the program. Have some good ones so far. Wes needs the full weekend to sort through the list of topics well i've got two weddings this weekend (laughs) and uh you know what day you tape and half pack with wes probably monday okay probably yeah no monday for sure love it yeah (laughs) right (laughs) today (laughs) i'm gonna have a great caesar salad recipe on that show just if you love caesar salad you might want to tune in oh hell yeah caesar salad dressing recipe i love caesar salad yeah fucking delicious that's a good one Caesar Kate looked over at me yesterday and she goes, what's a good submission for half pack with Wes ideas? And I go, oh, it's easy. Plausible conspiracy theories. Yeah. Conspiracy mm. theories. As I was, I was going a uh, SIG power rankings. Ooh. Um, yeah. You know, with, I put yeah. lottery strategies on the table. Lottery strategies one. is good. I got a lot of those. <laughs> All right. Uh, today's observances, <laughs> May 25th. Uh, a big upgrade from May 24th, which was like asparagus day or whatever. May 25th Ugh. is Afri- African Liberation Day, Greek Pride Day. No, geek Geek Pride Day. Oh, Geek Pride so Day. So worse. That's yeah. totally different. That's worse, yeah. Uh, <laughs> National Brown Baggot Day again. <laughs> what was Brown Baggot Day? I told up? you this was for alcoholics. <laughs> <laughs> Every yeah, day is, is Brown Baggot Day. It so is. <laughs> And wa- wine day and yeah. wine days in there. Yeah. 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 That's this yeah. is the fourth or fifth time wine day has been here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Towel day. Yeah. Lots of lots of uh, alky days. Don't don't um, gloss over the tough one that actually means something. The missing Children's Day yeah. and tap dance day. I mean, yeah. you're talking about towel day. I'm talking about towel day. No, I'm talking about <laughs> you got to bring awareness to missing children. Towel yeah. Day. Well, why didn't they? Why did they take them off? Uh, the milk oh cartons. man, you know who, nobody have milk cartons anymore. It's actually a really why? good. Uh, I listened to a podcast about that. It's a pretty good story. Couldn't tell you, but there's a there's an interesting reason behind. It's it. too expensive. Is is the reason? It's too, a, too much of a hassle to get your like a fucking picture on. I the think milk it carton. became a cry wolf situation. Honestly, I think people. Mm. people I think were it, wanting like, to get on the milk carton. No, it was more I, like people were just like, oh, there's the kid, and then they uh, pin people, their milk carton up at home. I think people didn't want to see the fucking sad ass kids on them on, when they're eating, having dinner. <laughs> when they're having cereal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't First thing in the morning. This, yeah. yeah. I don't give a fuck about this kid. I'm trying to have a family meal. <laughs> well, on this day, they should sell milk cartons <laughs> right. with right. the kids on them. Missing yeah. children's day. Yeah. Collect them all. Collect them all. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. All right. right. Let's do the news. I'll trade you a Tommy for a Jimmy. (laughs) Okay, move on. Move on. (laughs) Trade the milk cartons. The fat kids on the whole milk. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Move on, dude. This one's mint condition. Uh, Okay. Let's do the news. Up first is the Daily Buzz. And it's a five piece today. Number five trend in the daily buzz was snowden um snowden was trending not because he did anything but because defenders of belarus and russia or just haters of the usa in general have been quick to point out that the usa has grounded flights over europe in search of edward snowden before so uh, the usa had uh, gotten france and portugal to deny entry from a plane flying from russia but then had to land in austria with bolivia's president on board in 2013, uh, Snowden was not on the plane. He um, looks like everyone. So that must have happened all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that one was very notable. Obviously, a president of another nation on the plane while they were searching for Snowden. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, good little uh, feather in the cap point there for the people calling Uncle Sam a hypocrite on this one. Hashtag pardon Snowden. That's uh, good to know, man, because because the press on the Belarusian thing was like, the only dictator in Europe, if you can call Belarus Europe. Um, but it's a great point that, like, if we play that same dirty ass game, I mean, Jen Psaki was essentially, you know, saying that Biden wants answers on the uh, the well, ground. Turns the- out that his <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, his administration did the same thing in 2013, looking for Snowden. Um, I wouldn't call it his. Well, his his former bosses. Is he part of it? Uh, 
And he would he like to remind everybody on the campaign trail. Maybe not today. Uh, number four, uh, friend of the show and all pro left tackle of the Tennessee Titans, Taylor Luan, trended on Monday for the video of him over the weekend chugging uh, beers like multiple, uh, just like crushing the cans into his face. It was awesome. Just people cheering him on while he did it. He was at the uh, Predators game, Nashville Predators game, right by the glass. He put his daughter down and then just ripped the shirt off, started chugging beers. It was awesome. Taylor's a champ. Um, even remember if the bus. That, remember guys, that time the coach of the Tennessee Titans uh, joined our yeah, family f- feud game on the night of the draft? Yes, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. So <laughs> allegedly, awesome. there's a, a lot of googling going on in the uh, on the busing with the boys family feud team. They like to have fun. Well, they cheated, but they like to have fun. Yeah. You know, even on draft day, they're cheating on family feud. They're drinking beers at the Predators game. Those guys like to have fun. Yeah, the Titans are a fun team. Yeah. Run left, bus with yeah. the boys. Derrick Henry, he, the boy can run. Yeah. He uh he's been on my fantasy team last couple of years. <laughs> Get those yards acquisition. Yeah. Keeper league. You know Keeper <laughs> league. He's my guy. <laughs> yeah. And Taylor, uh, he hurt his knee last year, but I think he's gonna be back. So they should keep running left. Okay, number three, keeping it in the sports world. Julio Jones trended for answering uh Shannon Sharp's phone call while Shannon Sharp was on the air on Monday um and told him, quote, I'm out of there, man, referring to Atlanta in general. So uh, oh. Julio wants off the Falcons out of Atlanta, noting that he wants to win now. And there's at least 11 teams that could afford to trade for Julio Jones's current contract. This is um, fucked up. Eagles aren't one of them. Yeah. Forgive me for if I, I missed this. So Shannon Sharp was doing a broadcast, was like, let me dial up. He was Julio. like on air. Yeah. And he was like, all right, I'm going to call Julio. And Julio That's, picked up the phone. That yeah. is that is they, fucked up for the city of Atlanta to hear that on TV. Yeah, it's mm. tough. Tough for the Falcons, right? Oh my <laughs> God. He didn't say something way more fucked up, honestly. Like, he he was just thought he was just talking to Shannon, like, you know, pal to pal. He could have said some real thing, like, what are we going to, you know. Like, yeah, get, get this some, actually is great for Julio. Like bitches later. Now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now, I mean, he's like, he, he got it off his chest. He could pretend. He could say that he didn't know he was on air, even if he did. And everybody knows they got to get him out of there, Atlanta. So, yeah, lots of people going to want Julio Jones on their team. Damn, man. You just got to keep thinking back to what was it? Twenty six to three in the Super Bowl oh, against man. the Patriots. The Twenty five to three. three or tw- yeah. yeah. Oh, that was their window. They made right like there. flags out of it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, that's haunting. He yeah. knew what he was doing. When you're a player at that level, when you're when you're that deep of a vet, you just you can just play fucking games. You can speak your mind pretty much. Well, Julio, someone they all, people will want Julio. I mean, he still has a couple yeah. of years left. So a Julio's contender, Julio. will want, he doesn't. It just it's just sad yeah. for Atlanta because right. you know, all, all they've been through. It's yeah. rough for the Falcons. I mean, yeah. it's been been a bumpy time the whole time he's been there. Basically, speaking of Atlanta, can I hijack your segment for a second? Are you talking yeah. about Dominique Wilkins at all with what happened to him? Oh no, Atlanta? I'm not. Go ahead. Oh yeah, my that's god, big Atlanta update. Some <laughs> fucking French restaurant uh, that's a chain. It's also New York and a couple other places. <laughs> Hoity toity has a dress code, of course. Course, you know, aka doesn't let black people in, and they didn't. They mm-hmm. turned away Dominique Wilkins, who was wearing designer pants all, and a t-shirt. All-time Atlanta legend. He's the current, uh, like, vice president of the Atlanta Hawks and, and the best Atlanta <laughs> Hawk of all time. Nine-time All-Star winner, one-time scoring champ, two-time NBA dunk contest winner. He's just a fucking legend there, and he always dresses nicely. And they didn't let him in, and then and then he claimed racism, and then the restaurant was like, "No, it's just the dress code." And all of the Twitter comments came in. They're like, "Is this the dress code?" It was like a white woman in like spaghetti straps and a hat and like a white guy in a, in shorts and a t-shirt and a hat and like uh, they only apply the dress code apparently when dominique and some, and some other black folks That's why it's there so, it's surprising yeah. out of the uh it, like essentially it's the the capital of black america it's surprising out of atlanta that's terrible guess yeah. not all parts huh that restaurant's fucked bubba do you care to um uh defend your your new home city okay no. bubba shakes his head no, bubba's right? got a to-go bag from that restaurant i see it in the yeah. background yeah <laughs> Le, Bil- <laughs> Le Bilbo Cat. He's got. There's the. Yeah. There's the Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> you got what the hell Dominique jersey? What were they thinking? <laughs> Those that Dominique throwback jerseys are sick. Oh, they're though. fire. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. So good. Uh, yeah, Atlanta. Rough day in the trends. Um, moving on to number two, uh, the Eternals trailer dropped and it trended very hugely. On Monday, um, it's like Game of Thrones for Marvel, I guess, because it's Angelina Jolie and then a bunch of Game of Thrones actors uh, directed by Chloe Zhao, who, of course, also did Nomadland. Um, 
So yeah, people are excited. Uh, did anybody else? Did anybody else check out the Eternals trailer? Yeah, yeah. It kind of like struck me because I kept thinking like this is kind of like what the aliens might do to us. You know, like they've been watching. Like the whole thing is like we they've been watching over right, them. And they reveal and now, themselves. And they, they reveal themselves. And, yeah. and now this is the first time they're going to intervene. Kind of like maybe what the aliens might do with us because we're fucking shit up. Wes, too bad. are you full time? Are you on the alien train wow. now? Like well, alien, I mean, this, dude, I've always, I've always a, been on the a, alien a train. Pair, I just don't think that all things are aliens. Apparently, Wes is on the also. Wes is on the Eternals train. That trailer really <laughs> struck close to home. <laughs> no, I just thought it was he cool. Developed the whole story. No, that's yeah. the story. Yeah. You w- watch it. That's that's yeah. The, check that's out the trailer. It's, what, there, question there. mark on Chloe's out, right? So so huh? Nomadland came out this year, and obviously, mm-hmm. like with a movie like that, you have no idea whether it's going to crush or not. Like they didn't know that they were going to win. They won Best Picture, right? They had best no picture, they had yeah. no fucking idea. So like Marvel bet big on her, right? Saying like, okay, well, bet. she made some bet. little talky little travel movie with Francis McDormand going through menopause. Bam, Marvel mm-hmm. movie. Bam, what up? Good bet. McDormand is everybody like she's going to knock your game up a few notches anytime you get to work with her. She is. But then you got to deal with her. She is a weird fucking. Oh, <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that after watching Nomadland. <laughs> um, also, entertainment mentions the video game Bio Mutant also trended comes out today. Uh, Carrie Pay. Uh, K- Katy Perry, I- I'm like developing a speech impediment, is adding shows in Vegas uh, and Kevin Spacey is getting back oh, yeah. into acting after at long last. So, so we got that to look forward to. Good. Right. I really like him. He's a good actor. He's a great actor. <laughs> he is a great actor. <laughs> a great actor. What, what movie is he in? He's Kevin in, uh, Spacey. Yeah, he's in. Uh, what's the uh, beautiful? The one, uh, <laughs> fuck. Uh, the, about the guy that the that he's like the mastermind. Fuck. What's that movie? American he, Beauty. No, no. He when he walks out, he's the uh, he's the guy that's like a fictional character, hey, and he Alex, walks up. Lex Luthor. No, he's in baby. He's in Baby God, Driver. He's a movie. He's in Baby Driver. He's in um uh what be- what's the one where he won like Pat, the you're talking about what new movie? Oh, no, American, new- Beauty. American, American Beauty. American Beauty. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, God damn, what's the yeah. one I'm thinking of? We know K Pax. You're thinking of K Pax? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> He's <laughs> the mastermind <laughs> in K Pax. <laughs> no. Usual suspects. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I said as, usual. As, oh, you did. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> are you asking what movie is allowing him to be in it yes, now? Because yeah. <laughs> 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 they, that's what uh, I thought. They busted <laughs> him out of that movie uh that he that, oh, I forget who replaced him, but then Billionaire Boys Club is like the last movie he was in. Yeah. And like the poor bastards that cast <laughs> that guy, Billionaire's oh, Boys Club. Man. Because essentially just you know, they watched their investment just float out they the window. They burned yeah. money. Yeah, it was like burning it, money, putting him in it. It's in Italy, I think, is what I saw. So I don't know. So Very progressive over there. He's so playing a, he's playing a villain, of course, right? I would assume yeah. Yeah. he's going to have to do a few. His agent roles. is like, yeah. Kevin, Coming the only, back into it. only roles I can get your boy fuckers. Uh, yeah, he's like, um, in. I'm in. Do I get to fuck boys? Yeah. I'm going to win the Oscar for that one. Send, into it. send me a car. I think I uh, can handle the role. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gross. good old Spacey. Great to have you back, Kevin. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's gonna get a round of applause from the <laughs> staff when he gets in. He makes a million uh, bucks a day. Uh, Does I he? Mean, he gets results. Yeah. He's a good actor. Yeah, it's gonna be a good movie. Great actor. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> number one, <laughs> gonna, the trend of like uh, questionable people continues here. Number one, uh, it's all the political trends uh, that were happening on Monday, and what trended was fifty-three percent of Republicans trended that number uh because of a new ipsos poll that finds over half of the 750 republicans polled think that trump is the quote-unquote true president right now um as in they think the election was stolen uh because 56 percent of republicans that that were polled there uh thought that the you know results were result of illegal votes you know mail-in fraud election rigging yeah, well let me ask you a question here on this um did they tell the republicans they were polling that the base was listening on the line that's the big question no no no. so like i think that those those two questions were very close to one another like who's the true president as of right now and also was the election rigged basically you see three percent less saying trump is the true president now than said it was rigged so i think a lot of the people interpret that to mean like who's supposed to be president right now. No, 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 I know. Yeah. What I'm saying is they don't actually believe that. What I'm saying is we're living in a vacuum where everyone's afraid to deny Trump is the president. 
Every Republican I think, uh, well, I don't know about that. I think that those results, 56%, half the party think it was a, a rigged election. Well, they don't want to get Liz Cheney is, is really the situation. No, these are just people at home, man. These are just like people. Oh, I thought you were speaking, it was saying people in Congress. No, 750 oh, random like, Republicans. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm that's, sorry. Not, uh, that's a lot. Right. And you would think like I did. I thought that they were just saying, yeah, it was stolen and that he should be the true president. But Twitter was beside itself, of, of course, saying that, no, they believe that Trump is the actual president um, because that's what, you know, basically Twitter didn't read the questions that they were asked in the polls. Um, but yeah, no, 50%. It th doesn't really surprise me when you look at the question they actually asked them to me. Well, who who um, cares? Kids believe in Santa Claus and we don't give them shit. Right. Another interesting 50%. Nearly 50% of New Yorkers polled by Trump the Sierra. Does. <laughs> yeah, he does care. Uh, <laughs> so, so does another politician coming up here. Nearly 50% of New Yorkers polled by the Sierra College Research Institute, Institute still back Governor Andrew Cuomo's performance despite his numerous scandals involved, involving you know, sexually harassing female employees, massive book profits on COVID leadership, despite covering up sending people to their uh, graves and nursing homes, and also inappropriate business relationships with his brother the, at CNN. What was the percentage of people? You said? 49%, 50, so basically 50%. Support so, him? Support him in the state of New York. So basically, as always, both parties are pretty much okay with you no matter what you do, right. as long as you pick a side. Um, yeah, that's so. what it is. That's pretty That's much what it is. Um, also, Andrew Yang loves the Times Square subway stop for some reason, despite most New Yorkers always telling you to avoid Times Square altogether. Pat, any insight on this? I had to go to I was in Times Square on Friday. It is uh -huh. a fucking nightmare, but it is the theater district. So if you're a theater person, great for theater. Also, if you're a shrimp guy, Bubba Grump Shrimp Company. Great. So does it? Does this is because mm. Yang only knows that one subway People stop? People do go to Times Square if you work there. Like, like complex is there. Theater, the theater district is there. Otherwise, you're not. Yeah, there. but that's their least favorite stop because it's their work stop and it's crowded. It's right. a nightmare. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's worse. Yeah. It's a fucking yeah. nightmare. Yeah. So everybody's confused about that. Also, uh, Beto, psychedelic warlord O'Rourke is considering a run for Texas governor against Greg Abbott and potentially Matthew McConaughey as well after so he losing wants, so both he the wants Senate and the presidential place. race Yeah, the last three years. Surely the third time's a charm, right, Mark? He's going to he's he's gonna gonna get his ass knock, kicked by both Abbott and McConaughey. He's going to knock it out of the park, right, guys? These fucking assholes just got their Beto signs out of their lawns <laughs> in my neighborhood. Now that now they're back. Yeah, a, a, great pro a great point was brought up off air, and it's like, look, uh, Texas is like you know relatively purple, whatever you want to call it. It's not, it's not blue. It's it's red, but it, you, I guess you could make an argument that it's purple. But when you're talking about governor across the entire state and the guy that wanted to take away the guns in the presidential election, there's no fucking chance <laughs> he wins Texas, He's the gun, so the gun people. state of the world. Yeah, that's just no. Yeah, it's not going to happen for him. I wanted the better thing to work hardest when he was running for senator. And then uh, a yeah, little bit it's less Cruz. so. Cruz is a that's where, got, yeah. that's where he got his notoriety yeah. from. Yeah. That a little bit less great. so when he's running for president. And now I'm just like, Beto, you might want to find a university somewhere, take a large paycheck and sit this one out. You if know he, what I'm saying? If he gets third in the governor's race, he's going to like really, he's not going to be able to do much of anything after that. Uh, he's going to he's he's run for like local council. Right. Now he'll just always be the, like the, the dem dude in Texas and they'll yeah. just keep feeding him stuff. He never so. did hard factor. So. So fuck him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Fuck him. Well, well, but he did write a lot of like weird, like uh, rage porn poetry. We had Willie Nelson's warlord. fucking daughter email yeah. his campaign person. That that's where we that just you know, full disclosure because it's not going to happen now. I I pulled a major string. Willie Nelson's daughter sent an email to his people after Willie did a free fucking Beto rally. He hadn't done a show in forever, and his fan base freaked out. Bad look for Willie in terms of keeping fans. Willie wanted right. to do it so good on Willie. Brand, that's, yeah. that's the type of power we were we were coming with. And his 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 team still passed. Pass. So, yeah. No well, thanks. you know, Beto's got a skateboard today. In mm -hmm. retrospect, Pat, everybody has passed on Beto O'Rourke. So right, bet we can get the, him now. In the end, yeah, we get the last laugh because he's going to get passed on again if he runs for governor. He let's probably get shouldn't. Him. Let's, let's get him when he runs for governor and just ask him a <laughs> bunch of McConaughey questions. Like, what's your favorite <laughs> McConaughey movie? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> can you say all right all right yeah. all right for us? are you gonna be uh, as pumped as we are when mcconaughey wins i the hope yeah. i hope mcconaughey runs so bad that's gonna God. spice things up he's yeah. so sweet to just drink a bourbon with mcconaughey wouldn't it yeah. a ut game <laughs> how's utep looking this year good uh fuck beto <laughs> 
All right. Yeah. Well, that's the buzz today. And today's buzz was brought to you by Truebill. You ever notice that subscriptions tend to add up and sometimes we don't notice the monthly deductions being taken out of our bank accounts for those subscription services? Did you sign up for a bunch of subscri subscription services in quarantine? Uh, but now that you're headed back into the real world and your family uh, doesn't need all those uh, streaming services, apps, whatever you downloaded, signed up for during quarantine, it's happened to a lot of people. 80% of people have a bill they don't know about. Do you want to find out if you're one of those people and could save a bunch of money every month? If you do, use Truebill. It's an easy-to-use app that reviews your recurring charges in one place, and you can even cancel subscriptions straight from inside the app. Very helpful. Also, also helps you create and manage a monthly budget, monitor savings goals, and much, much more. It's got bank-level security, so your data is safe with Truebill. Truebill has saved its users more than $50 million and counting. The average person saves $720 per year with Truebill. Get started today at Truebill.com slash factor. That's T-R-U-B-I-L-L or T-R-U-E-B-I-L-L dot com slash factor. Take control of your finances and start saving at Truebill.com slash factor. That's Truebill.com slash factor. Yeah, hell yeah. I was thinking, Will, when you were saying that, it's like, some people find out like they have a child in Vietnam from the war and it makes their uh, relationship with their American family really awkward. This yeah. is like being able to uh, just erase that kid, you know, bam, that you can sign up for 23 me and you're all good. Cause just like true bill, it'll take out the kid that you never knew that you had, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, yeah I wanted to pass key subscription charges. Yeah, I wanted to give an unsolicited testimonial to Truebill. I've actually been using Truebill for a few months before they even became a sponsor. Nice. They gave me like 60 bucks. I found two subscriptions that I had no idea I had. What something were they? called something called P Pornhub. I, I have never heard of it in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, I pro, seriously, they did. Porn, they did help number. me out. There were a couple like magazine <laughs> subscriptions, like old little bullshit subscriptions, and I like knocked like sixty bucks off of my my monthly credit card bill. That's fucking awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah! Awesome. True bill is the shit. It does uh, work. Yeah. Truebill.com slash factor t r u e b i l l dot com slash. We got another great product for you too, guys. It's uh, Mint Mobile. After years mm. of fine print contracts and getting More ripped off saving. by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, is that there's always a catch. There's always a catch. So mm. when I so first what's heard the catch, well, there's not one with Mint Mobile, guys. Fuck. Uh, yeah, I heard that they offer premium wireless ser wireless service starting at fifteen dollars a month. I mean, literally, I was like, "What the fuck? Are you crazy? What's the catch? No catch." Mint Mobile's secret sauce, guys. They're okay. the first company to sell wireless service online only. Cut out the retail stores. No crazy overhead. Bam. So what are you doing? I'm paying. I was paying like one hundred and ninety dollars a month. It's insane. Now I'm paying like yeah, all those people with the Verizon store. The managers are making like eighty grand a year. They don't have to worry about them at Mint Mobile. Yeah, let's send those guys home. Those guys shouldn't be wearing ties. You know what I mean? Uh, for people looking for extra shavings, guys, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just fifteen bucks a month. All comes with all plans come with unlimited talk and text, high speed data delivered uh, on the nation's largest five G network. You know what I'm saying? Use your own phone, so no weirdness uh, with any Mint Mobile plan. Keep the same number. Okay, well, what reason could you have to not sign up? I, I don't know. What about all your contacts? Bam. And if you're not 100% satisfied, seven-day money-back guarantee. So switch to Mint Mobile. Get premium, premium wireless service for just 15 bucks a month. That's insane. Call to action. Here we go. Here's what I want you to do. Mm. To get the wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get that plan shipped to your door for free, you go to mintmobile.com slash hard factor. That's mintmobile.com slash hard factor. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile dot com slash hard factor one word gentlemen we yes. have a serious problem on our hands oh no bison they become self-aware so yeah the I animal knew, I knew or like the bad guy happen. from street fighter wait for now the animal okay Wes, yeah. how did you know it was going to happen bison i just had a feeling you know, <laughs> the, the look it. in their eyes or what like yeah. uh i just saw, you know you they wander around i know there's something more there they're yeah. deep thinkers <laughs> yeah well there is Wes. so Look out. Mm -hmm. uh, if, yep. you, if you guys don't know, <laughs> in an effort to be respectful, whenever humans enter a national park land, they're forced to offer the animals within said park certain rights that uh, humans themselves don't have, which mostly boiled down to you can't touch the animals and you can't yell at the animals. And until we develop Dr. Doolittle-like technology that allows us to speak English to animals, uh, at which point we'll be able to determine which ones deserve our respect, and which ones are jerks. Adhering to these animal whims is just the way it is right now. 
So where I come from, respect is uh, it's it's earned, not given. Yes. But good luck telling that to the people that run Yellowstone National Park. Uh, every animal in there is a goddamn Mother Teresa. Uh, anyway, this soft ass park management and coaching strategy combined with bison catching on to the fact that they're technically the alpha in any human interaction situation has oh, yeah. led to quite the issue in Yellowstone recently. Um, and this is evidenced by the massive trap, massive trap, mad, massive traffic jam caused in the park on May 13th when, quote, a tired bison calf uh, decided to just lay down in the middle of the road for about 20 minutes. So oh, you could imagine stink. You can imagine, look at this. You got the you got the bison, the tired little bison calf, and you have like six bison just standing around oh, protecting and awesome. just laughing their asses off. Imagine mm. if you're the front car though. That's awesome. You're just getting, yeah. you're just you're just taking so many bison videos. Like yeah, I think you get you. sick of it after like three minutes. Yeah. Well yeah, they, that is cool though. They're protecting the baby bison. That's badass. Yeah. yeah. Well, they were stuck there for a long time, guys. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. it is kind of badass. Yeah. Those bison to go. walk right next to your car at Yellowstone. It's awesome if you if you haven't done it. It's worth it's worth the drive. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm just saying if you got a hungry kid in the back, Will, and you can't fucking move because there's a goddamn bison calf. Well, there's a hungry bison. Oh, yeah, maybe you should be a good maybe, compassion. Maybe you should be as good a parent as those bisons are, and you know, have you know, figure it out. Those bison were sitting there just just laughing at all the cars. You think that this was just a prank? I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm, the bison are catching on that whatever the fuck they want to do, they want to mess with the humans. Just, oh, one of our calves is tired. Lay down, buddy. And uh, <laughs> let's just watch the traffic jam ensue. This is what I'm saying. It's a problem. All yeah. right. Well, they are like males are like the size of a Prius. So they're probably not too intimidated by cars. No, they'll attack a car. Yeah, they're, they're just they're not scared. OK, well, one man who saw through the bullshit. You know, yeah, I think I'd blame it actually on electric vehicles, honestly. OK, well, well, that's a different conversation <laughs> for a different time. Uh, oh, one park goer who saw through the bullshit approached the herd, which led them to eventually clear the road. Um, but his move was not met with support from all the park goers, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> yes, one guy, was, love, one guy was irritated. Yes, I yeah. love these situations. I yeah. love these situations. Yeah, you got uh, you got yes. like about 200 cars all lined up watching this magical moment. And you got one guy who's not going to stand for this shit. <laughs> one guy who's got some sense, you know, who's like, I want the fucking line to move. Yeah, all these other assholes are happy to be sitting there all goddamn day if they had their way, just watching this baby bison calf sleep on the asphalt. He's a local. He shot the, yeah. the baby, baby bison. All right. No, no they also don't want you. Th these people, are, they are very upset if you approach the bison. Oh, you, my God. They, they, they do not want you to approach the bison. And they, longtime park goer Ron Sturbins <laughs> was upset, Will. <laughs> I bet he was. Yeah. He told USA Today, quote, we've spent 10 plus years in the park and only twice I've seen bison just lay down, sleep and refuse to move. And when the gent got out of his car, I was surprised and waited to see his bison whisperer skills. <laughs> Not a risk I would have taken. Just saying. <laughs> uh, and then called him reckless. Oh, yeah. What happened to this guy? Nothing. Literally. He just literally like walked near the bison. And they they cleared the road and he got back in his car. Problem <laughs> solved. He got the problem solved. <laughs> yeah. Problem solved. 100 yeah. percent. He picks um, up the bison and moves it to the other side of the road. Well, apparently they'll charge. Yeah. yeah. You're not you're not supposed to be within 25 yards of a bison in the park. Yeah. Um, so a couple of couple of stories here. Uh, I've. I've done this where I've gotten way too close to the bison at Yellowstone and everybody looks at you and gawks at you like you're a fucking psychopath. Like I got like like within probably like five, ten feet of like a bison that was like walking around and to take a really close picture of him. And everybody just stares at you like you're the craziest person in the world. It's if like you being get... a little bit too far out in the ocean without like a, a raft or anything. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So that that's that's number one. Number two, people hate when you interact with the wildlife. Like I was at a park uh, in Nevada the other day and we were just trying to get this Oriole to fly from a branch. And like these people gave us the dirtiest fucking look like like we had just tried to kill a family member of theirs because like <laughs> we were trying to get an Oriole to fly out of a tree. And it's like, could, you know, you can just like some people just don't want that you to touch asshole in the park today. I'll have the bison <laughs> burger. That's what right. I'm saying. When you go in one of those parks bro, they have more rights than you do. And I, this is the problem. You should expect mm, to see a lot burger? more of this behavior because the bison have <laughs> they've become sentient and they know what's going on. So yeah, they are always looking. I heard it's more sustainable, Mark. Bison bison meat. Oh, it's delicious. I'm going to end, end the story with a fun fact. Okay. Um, the plural of bison 
is bison. Hey, oh. So were you talking about one or multiple the whole time? Ooh, I, don't I don't know. know. Who knows? I don't know. It's a, it's a very progressive gender pronoun know. situation. Also, ha- hasn't their population like recovered? I don't fucking know. Well, you let's get, to, like, you're, let's you're get like, to killing them again, then. Yeah, you're like raising uh, isn't the bison, Orioles like in the a park, feel-good please, story please. in general. Okay, yeah. well, yeah. You have like a bison skin hat from your trip to Yellow. Guess, well, what I, I guess, guess what kind of burger I ate at the park? Okay. Are we Plank talking burger. bison or buffalo? Are they the same thing? <laughs> I don't know. I think they are. Hey, all right, we're going to do the uh, TikTok international moment here. But first, I would like to say we were uh, very nice to China, I believe, yesterday because we had a story about China. Uh, yes. Before we start, I would like to be very not nice to specifically the Wuhan lab in China, which mm. it seems like now is more plausible. It's becoming more and more plausible. That's where the fucking virus came from. There's going to be more uh, of that on the show, but that really boils my blood if uh, people were getting sick in the lab and they lied the whole time and allowed for travel and all that stuff um, Boy, that would be terrible wouldn't it i'm not real happy about that since three and a half million people are dead but let's do the tiktok international moment <laughs> all right hell yeah uh, all right uh we have a new eurovision winner and it's italy's rock band main skin that handily beat the 26 other finalists this saturday with their hit song zte Booney. and here's a picture of the band on stage and as you can see the other countries really didn't stand a chance uh no. they look pretty nice. rock and roll good pyrotechnics bell bottoms yes yep. and yeah. it was not without controversy though as main skin's lead singer damien Dav- Dav- david was spotted on cam- on live video during the broadcast leaning over a glass table and what people thought was him snorting a line of cocaine uh there you see it david david demanded a drug test saying he does not take drugs and he passed on monday after the cocaine had left his system (laughs) <laughs> oh, ser- seriously, though, it's a good thing it wasn't this guitarist who got caught on camera because there's no way that guy's passing a drug test. <laughs> oh, my God. Or in a live <laughs> test. <laughs> his eyes look like just like black holes in his skull. Yeah. Also, no. people relax. They're a rock and roll band. They're not airplane pilots. Who cares? Uh, right. they want- Aren't you yeah. supposed to like do drugs? Yeah, yeah I don't like my Scandinavian rock stars <laughs> yeah. to be on cocaine. Take away their Eurovision title. Um, uh, in Catalonia, <laughs> Spain, a statue has been removed that has, as it has become clear it is a danger to stupid people. A father and son were walking by the paper mache dinosaur statue outside the movie theater in a Barcelona suburb when they noticed something stuffed in the leg of the Stegosaurus. Turns out it was a 39-year-old dead man. Police say the man was oh. yeah. Police say the man was reported missing by his family hours before he was found stuffed inside the dino leg, and that they did not intend to investigate for foul play uh, because they believe the guy dropped his cell phone in the dinosaur leg and then crawled in there and got stuck and died, and that the bullet in his head and the message carved in his chest must must have already been on him before before all that happened. Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, it's a paper mache mache statue. Uh, Sounds like it's pretty hard to accidentally die from, but the the Catalonia police are so lazy they're not going to investigate it. It's like, if I've seen it once, I've seen it a a thousand times. This man crawled into the leg of that dinosaur looking for his cell phone, and then he immediately gave up. (laughs) Yeah, imagine that moment right after you realize that you're going to die in that dinosaur. Isn't it also, it looks like once you you pound on it, it's a sidewalk. It's a, yeah, if he was alive inside of it, wouldn't somebody easily find him? I guess he didn't find his cell phone and call anyone, or there's no service in the leg of the Stegosaurus. I mean, there's a lot of holes to this story. I think someone yeah. put him in there in the middle of the night after they killed him. But... <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> Who knows? The police don't think so. And lastly, maybe uh, he was knocked out and then yeah. it was just like he never recovered. If he was upside down, I don't I know. Fell, uh, yeah, he fell <clears throat> upside down. That's that could be it. Yeah, they said he crawled in head first. He was killed. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> just, you don't see a paper mache dinosaur and think I might die today. No. Inside that <laughs> thing. You know, you just don't. Yeah. You don't suspect no. it. Let me just grab my phone real quick. This is going to yeah. work out. Oh no! I don't. A, I don't that's know. That's a terrible way to go. I. I mean, I a hope. Very that, bad way to go. It's embarrassing. I hope that it wasn't a mistake. Because if it was, if it was a mistake, it's just a horribly embarrassing. You got to hope for that guy's family. He was murdered, right? Uh, <laughs> what was the dinosaur? A Legosaurus? <laughs> oh, oh. A Stegosaurus. But good, good joke. For last one, Freestat Clinic, which is a hospital in Austria, has apologized to an elderly man for a tragic mistake. 
That mistake being that they amputated amputated the 82 year old man's wrong leg. Whoops. Uh, we have to find out how this failure, this mistake could happen. I would like to apologize publicly here. The clinic's medical director, Norbert Fritsch said at a news conference, apparently it was human error and they marked the wrong leg and a hospital worker even asked the man to confirm which leg was uh, correct before surgery, but he was unable to articulate since he's 82 and very sick. So they took his gurgling noises for confirmation and cut away. Yeah, that's a lie. The, the, the hospital is hoping to balance out the one star review they're going to receive for cutting off the wrong leg with the five star review for a flawless surgery on the correct leg. That surgery has already been scheduled at the same clinic. Uh, I guess they can't fuck it up this time. So he's got no legs now. No leg <laughs> now. Not, he, for a few more days. He has. He, <laughs> he was supposed to go leg. to peg leg and now he goes to wheelchair. Oh, yeah. What happened gonna, to my Volvo guy in Harrisonburg in, in really? college? They yeah. took a wrong leg. Norm bro. from Strictly Volvo. They took the wrong leg at Harrison oh, at Rockingham God. Memorial Hospital. Why was he still working? Shut up. Really? Swear to God. Why um, was he still working? He didn't have enough money. He was just running his Volvo shop. They didn't give him, Strictly but they didn't Volvo. give him million. They didn't give him millions of dollars for taking the wrong leg. I don't remember. I just you remember settlement that yeah. we were right? PFT and I were there telling him the story about how like they misdiagnosed PFT's broken nose, and we thought we were telling this man a story, and then he took his cane and tapped his metal leg. Yeah, and he goes. Yeah, that's cute. They took the wrong leg from me. And so, right. but how have the other legs, legs, legs Yeah, do you have two missing legs then? Uh, look, I we can call Norm from Strictly. So Volvo. Norm's a liar. Yeah. Norm's, Norm's a liar. Yeah, I think Norm's, Norm's a liar. You, they're right. going to take the other leg. He was right. one up in you, yeah. is what he did. Yeah, he was pulling your leg. He was one up in He's pulling your leg. I don't. Why would he? Why, well, why does he have the other leg? Pat doesn't make sense. Right. Staff, hey. The yeah. staff was nice, and the food was surprisingly good for a hospital, but they cut off my good leg. One star. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have more than one of whatever you're getting operated on, consider going somewhere else. One star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got him. 88. Norm That's tough. Show. Yeah. Let's get Norm on. I don't believe him. I'll see if it's still a business. I'm sure. It's, yeah. yeah. They lowballed Norm. Um, all right, he, gonna he call uses this. That, he uses that for sales. They took my oh. wrong leg. Right. Buy a Volvo. <laughs> well, man, well, was, was it a you got to ask to see the other leg when he says that. Right, like, my other leg was well, so Norm, deformed. Norm, did your other leg magically heal after they <laughs> right. took your wrong leg? I don't. Ah, uh, it's permanently closed. That's sad. Yeah, no. still the owner's a liar. Yeah, well, hold on. Jason Lackey says the mechanic is dishonest. Oh, yeah. No. One star. <laughs> Apple he doesn't lied fall to me about his leg. <laughs> that Norm's a real liar. Yeah. 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 One star. So don't believe a word Norm says. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, guys. Going to call this segment uh, Mile High Morons, and it's stories from our friendly skies. So all about uh, stories from planes. So this first story is from an American Airlines flight out of Tokyo headed for Dallas, Texas. And uh, depending on how you look at it, this is either a bucket list moment for you as a passenger or an extremely frustrating and scary ordeal. For me, it's bucket list. Maybe not on this flight because the flight from Tokyo to Dallas is not a short one, 11 hours to be exact. <clears throat> and on this particular flight, there were only 60 passengers. Unfortunately for people uh, hoping to get to Dallas that day, one of the passengers was a 26-year-old woman named Waka Suzuki. Still not sure if that's a real name. Sounds fake to me, um, but uh, that's what they're saying. Anyway, Waka um, really, really, really likes to relax and watch her phone on flights. That's what she does, which me is too. what she does. Yeah, me too. Who doesn't? Which is what she did for the first three to four hours of the 11 hour flight, keeping to herself, just happy as can be watching Hard Factor on YouTube, probably. Mm -hmm. But as the plane crossed the Pacific, something uh, oh, I can't even do this. Really? I was yeah, something really bad happened. Uh, Waka's <laughs> Waka's something really bad happened. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> oh wait. OK. <laughs> You went back for it. You went back for it. You left it behind, and you went back. Oh, man, <laughs> he had a you had a chance to not do it. Bubba How bad was it, was it Wes? Uh, it was really bad. Waka's <laughs> phone uh, stopped charging, and she was in danger of losing the only thing that was apparently keeping her sane. So she um, she asked the flight attendants over who uh, tried to fix the issue but couldn't, seeing as they are not electricians. Um, and realizing her fate of no phone for the remaining seven hours, Waka decided to take matters into her own hands and uh, to get to the nearest phone charger, which I guess she thought was in the cockpit, because as she became more and more agitated, she stormed up the aisle from the coach right at the cockpit in the process knocking over a flight attendant and stomping on her uh, foot before banging on the cockpit Whoa. door. Damn. Yeah. 
she wanted her uh she wanted the the, the flight uh, the the, the pilot not, to fix you're not gonna stop a waka must have been a good a movie <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she did not want to stop watching what she was watching. So the pilot put the plane on level three lockdown, called the FAA and diverted the flight to Seattle while Waka sat in plastic handcuffs until it landed. Um, even when they landed in Seattle, Waka refused to deboard for 25 minutes until they drug her out what? like a hog on a spit, I assume. Um, oh, this she, lady's just she didn't want to face the music. Yeah, she knew. She's, she, yeah, she, knew the, she knew the second she got off that plane, it was pain time. Right. She's yeah. like, oh, I'm going to jail for a yeah. long ass time. Yeah. yeah. And this this whole time, this poor woman's mother was with her. They were supposed to connect in oh. Dallas, then go to oh, Cancun no. for a 10, 10, va- 10 day vacation, something that Waka clearly wasn't mentally prepared for, but clearly desperately needed. Um, the oh, FBI is looking at what Cancun. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, That's not terrible. anymore. That mom, I hope that like wasn't like her last penny, like saving up oh. to take her crazy daughter up to Cancun. I don't she know. It's no, she needs to get Waka don't a therapist. This. Poor yeah, people don't I, do this. Her name, yeah. uh, no, no word on whether she's an heir to the Suzuki Motors fortune. Uh, True. But, her last name's Suzuki. It could yeah, change. Unless, she's rich. Yeah. I don't, it might be common over there. Oh, you think know. it's a rich person's freak out, Pat? You think this is. A, I'm telling you, poor people can't afford to freak out like this. She rich was in coach. Freak out. Also, poor people don't get have as readily uh, available Valiums. You know, they can't get <laughs> Valium as easily or Klonopin. Yeah. Neither could Waka, though. Waka needed some. She was she on it, Matt. Yeah, you think she's just she's just she's taken so much that she's this is not a sober situation, right? So. It doesn't even affect her anymore. She's, no, no, she no. She, she, they, they said there was no prescription drugs found on her or any booze. So she was just crazy. In her straight system. Up, she was just did they check crazy. in her? Uh, I don't know if they checked inside of her, but I, I feel like they did. But uh, the FBI is looking at it. So <laughs> uh, this next story is brought to us uh, from Madurai, a city in the state of Tamil Nadu, India, where, of course, COVID is running rampant and COVID lockdowns are strict. So when one couple wanted to get married and realized not all their family and friends would be able to attend due to the lockdown, they chartered a fucking spice jet flight. That's a hilarious Indian airline spice, spice jet, jet with all their family and friends and got married midair uh, where they certainly broke COVID restrictions. 30,000 oh, feet. Spice jet. This yeah, sounds awesome. Spice- yeah, what's yeah. A, is, is it a jet that just has the spice channel playing 24 hours? <laughs> I don't know. It's just the I was airline. thinking they were all like high on like uh, uh, synthetic marijuana. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, spice. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, a, spice the here's a picture of a, of the wedding on. The, so they had photographers, they had videographers and no one's wearing their mask. It's just a, it's just a <laughs> wedding in midair. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. they just did it to get around. COVID. For they got, yeah, they got it. They did it to get around. COVID. There's just packed to the gills. Wow. No one's wearing a mask. Yeah. Um, and then they smart. landed in India, back in India, like nothing, yeah. nothing happened. Of course, the pictures approved otherwise. And now the flight crew and a couple are, are in deep shit. Um, I guess the crew asked them to put on the mask repeatedly. They broke it. Um, and this did. The whole the lockdown was supposed to end May 31st, um, which they, they could have waited a week but, over there. Right. Oh, well, yeah. Like, but when you got spice jet money, you don't wait once to get married. Right. Um, Again, so rich people. Yep. Yeah. Making so money. that's Man, both those stores are rich assholes being assholes on planes. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the second one is definitely. certainly rich. Well, she was in coach, <laughs> though, so I don't know. She was she, well, they didn't say she ran from coach. So I don't why know. do you think she was so mad? Because she yeah. was in coach for the they first time. Probably didn't have it like an upgrade for it. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Like last minute flight, no yeah. first class seats available. Right. right. That's that's, that's tough. True. Yeah. Um, and guys, I used to need coffee to get me through the day. Not so much anymore. I love True Niagen. Here you go. They sent us all a, a free little sample. I've been popping these bad boys. Uh, fuels the body's engine, uh, energy engines, maintains cellular metabolism, and even supports heart health, which God knows we all need on this podcast. I don't badly, know about you guys, yeah. but it's very badly. Yes. I, have, I have more energy. Don't need those extra cups of coffee since I started taking it. With 11 published human clinical studies and backed by Nobel Prize winners, True Niagen is a supplement that clinically is proven to boost NAD levels, which is an essential coenzyme required for cellular energy and repair. So energize your cells, bro. Uh, mm-hmm. can definitely feel it working, so I'm going to keep take, popping, them, popping them every morning. And more vitality, uh, f- uh, for you, add more vitality to your life today with True right. Niagen. Yeah, right now, yeah. Like the bull. Um, new uh, customers can save 10% on their first purchase by going to trueniagen.com slash factor. Use code factor. That's T-R-U-N-I-A-G-E-N dot com slash factor. Code factor to save 10% on your first purchase. Trueniagen.com slash factor. Code factor. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. 
These are coming in just in time for the metal detecting show. Oh, the, just the, in time. the treasure doesn't stand the chance with us. Oh, oh you're going to be so locked <laughs> in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Uh, we're going to get through these last ones quick, but people are enjoying the longer shows, so it's all good. If yeah. you think your family is weird, count your lucky stars. You aren't one of the 19 Beller kids. Ohio the Bellers? B E L L A R. Ohio couple and two of their sons, 54 year old Robert Beller. His 49-year-old wife, Deborah Beller, and their 27 and 24-year-old sons, Jonathan and Josiah Beller. I think we have a picture of most of those people. Uh, that's, that's Jonathan, the 27-year-old. Josiah was already in jail, so he's not pictured. Are all in custody and are charged in a sexual abuse case. It turns out the Bellers are an end-of-the-world conspiracy family, and they believe that siblings are supposed to have children with one another to repopulate the planet amid the apocalypse oh Uh-oh. wait what well, but why Uh-oh. are they starting wait no oh, come on oh, no mm. so this according to sarah beller who escaped the family in 2020 when she was 16 you thought you had a bad lockdown she's getting fucked by her brothers oh, oh man they get they need to helen keller the bellers the, yeah get the bellers out of here wait told you i can't I was coming at this one hot from the beginning so mark though you thought you had a bad lockdown wouldn't Whoa. the apocalypse have have had to have started for them to enact the policy there shouldn't this policy be like an will, emergency only it's always coming thing? will that's will a the, procrastinated attitude will, attitude, will, the, oh, will the, Bell- the bellers didn't respond to my line of questioning and i, I couldn't get inside their mind so i don't know how to answer that question uh okay. sarah also alleges that the family was a cult and that her uncle james beller was the church or cult leader and that the entire family would have to go to his long ass church sessions every day even if they were like very sick uh so he was the guy preaching about the incest to combat the apocalypse it was james Beller, the cult leader, he's called uh, Sarah's accusations complete lies, and he refuses to. This is so fucked up. He refuses to cooperate with the prosecution team, saying he won't speak to them uh, until he's able to speak to Sarah directly alone first. Oh, <laughs> oh don't let her do that. No, he oh. wrote that in an email. So he wants to one last crack at the intimidating brainwash approach, or maybe to kill her. Either way, we can't let that uh, meeting take place, right? Um, no, no, well, we I mean- can't. It looks like they're in custody. The Bellers are luckily detained. James, oh, throw the Bellers James, in a cellar. I know. <laughs> James Beller is not technically in custody because he didn't. I don't know. I don't know why not yet. But so the, 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 the the patriarch leader, is out there walking around the free. He doesn't have any kids necessarily or not the 19 kids, but he's the one that's doing the whole brainwashing he's the cult leader and he has not to, he's not arrested yet they might be like waiting to get him on yeah charges. this is the tip of the iceberg yeah the, the james needs to go away forever robert and, and deborah just sacrificed their children for for james and the cause sarah beller's two brothers are the ones charged specifically with sexual abuse that's jonathan beller he remains at southeastern ohio regional jail on account of gross sexual imposition josiah beller was already locked up like i said on unrelated charges and now he faces three counts of rape of his sister two counts of gross sexual not great crime no. to go to jail for because no. then you're you're a sister fucker. no, yeah, no that's, that's not that's there. not welcomed at the jail i also yeah. hope that when the judge reads the charges he's like gross sexual because yeah. <laughs> it is it's fucking gross he's asking the same questions will were he's like now has the apocalypse started or <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Rob, <laughs> Robert, it's not it's, logic's not that Robert Beller is charged with account. The father's uh, account of engaging in corrupt activity and two counts of endangering children. Deborah's charged with engaging in corrupt activity. Oh, and the Athens County Sheriff Sergeant Jimmy Childs was also arrested during the case. He is charged with obstruction of justice and tampering with evidence. Oh, he, no. he allegedly deleted evidence of phone calls he had with Robert Beller and gave false information on the investigation. So the Bellers had a sergeant under their payroll uh, Ooh, in this cult. The Bellers, yeah. this could be it's a it could be a big cult. Yeah, it might be not the first last time we talk about the Bellers. No. Wow. Yeah. What town is that again? Uh, it's in Athens County, Ohio. I don't know. You don't want to be there. Ohio. Oh, a town God, you don't want to be a... in. Yeah. Tell her on the Bellers. You know. That's yeah. where uh, I think that's where Joe Burrow's from, Athens, Ohio. Right. Who cares? Well, uh, yeah. Let's yeah. Let's let's burn that family to the ground. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So we could end it there. No, well, that would be pretty depressing. Come on, do a f- short, fun one. Okay, let's end it on a fun one, guys. A team of scientists announced on Monday 
that they had partially restored the sight of a blind man. This is very cool. By building light catching proteins in one of his eyes. Um, their study was published in the journal Nature Medicine and outlines the treatment, uh, which was a combination of gene therapy and a pair of goggles, uh, which is pretty cool. And the goggles from a Paris company called Gen Sight um, Biologics. There's a picture of the gentleman. He looks like uh, he looks like they're almost like there. He's going to steampunk uh, yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it looks like what a steampunk uh, like designer would make that would that he'd say this is this mass cures blindness. There you go. Mark's blind. He's put his blinders on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> guys, the subject of the study was a 58 year old man who was diagnosed with a previously irreversible form of blindness called uh, retinitis pigmentosa, which is caused by an inherited eye disease. So take that. That guy's dad. He beat it. Um, and don't worry, Patriots. We're not letting all those frog kissing French have all the blindness curing fun. A New York City based company called Bionic Sight LLC announced in March that four blind people at an early stage clinical trial are now able to detect light and motion after undergoing a similar treatment of gene therapy. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is awesome. It's pretty dope. Mem so remember the like if you if you thought those videos of people trying on like the, uh, color. the color blind glasses were great. Wait till we get the I can see for yeah, the first time see. videos. Holy yeah. moly. Those, those those are tear jerkers. Of, yeah. And you don't have this like there's good reason these videos don't exist but i imagine it's going to be the equivalent of if you could um take a video of a uh 13 year old boy masturbating for the first time at the moment of climax That's what, <laughs> mm -hmm. the it's look like, on his face is going to be very similar to the look yeah on his face is it's like the it's like different. the video of sarah Bella when she got to some other family's arms oh god right. okay guys right. now it's a beautiful moment. No, we <laughs> moved on from the Bellers. Oh, my bad. The Bellers, the Bellers <laughs> stay also, in their lane. But also, <laughs> bad, hold on. Yeah, we're, we're done with that. This also, like, kind of proves that the Neuralink will work, right? Like, this, it, like, because they claim that it'll, that it, like, will help people interpret situations. It's got to like, open improve. the door for all sorts of shit. Well, dude, right, because it's the same process. Basically. Right. So there's some cool shit going on. Um, So it was the gene therapy and then the goggles that the guy was wearing. I think he wore them for, like, almost seven months. So this would have happened. Um pre-pandemic uh but essentially pandemic hit but they'd gotten the goggles to this guy and they were like you know obviously you're blind so it's not like the goggles were obscuring his non-vision uh mm -hmm. and he doesn't know that he looks like an asshole walking around the neighborhood with these goggles but he was like rocking them for seven months and like seventh month he was like man i'm i'm starting to see light i'm starting to see like little flashes of light in these goggles which is nuts totally nuts you probably think you know it's not gonna not gonna work but um and yeah and i do want to point that out it's not full vision guys but the goggles right. And gene therapy did give the subject uh, in the experiment um, ghostly perception of objects in a narrow field of view. So spooky. Crazy, nice. but a huge spooky upgrade cool. for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Anything's better than what yeah. he had. Yeah. Which is no sight. Um, yeah. So that's a, that feels good, right? That's good. There's lots of good stuff happening on that. Major yeah. cancer, amazing way to major start cancer drug breakthroughs happening in, right now. Unless I have a really dark one if you guys want to end it nope. on that. Um, okay. We're going to end it there. Hey, hey, squad. Uh, if you are new to the show, do us a favor. And a lot of people, we had iTunes problems. Uh, that was not our fault. That was Apple Podcasts. Yeah, and Apollary. Apparently, but it's a, it's like an OS. iOS fourteen point five has po Apple Podcast issues across the board. So, so sorry yeah. if if, ah. if your Apple Podcast has been loading. Problem. It was a real beehole situation. But if you're listening to the show and you're not subscribed, which is totally possible, here's what I'm going to ask you to yes. do: open your phone, go to the show. Go to the uh, more episodes or the show page and hit subscribe. Awesome. Thank you. Or if you're listening on Spotify, click the little follow button. Follow the show. That way uh, they'll uh, on Apple Podcasts, it'll auto download the show for you. A lot of people mm -hmm. ask us that question. Where's the show? Mm -hmm. uh, you can set up to auto download. Uh, and that helps us. That helps you uh, wake up with Hard Factor. That's the idea. Every morning, Hard Factor comes out. We do the show every goddamn day. So oh, tell your friends if they want the news in a light, fun, mostly non, um, non Keller, Deller, Oh, Beller. odds, non -beller. odds Beller. are very good that you'll be the only friend that knows about the Beller family. Yeah, so you can well, use that I'll, at parties. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. Anti Beller yep. podcast though. Oh, yeah, anti Beller. No. Don't but... tell people that we specialize in Beller the Bellers, but Pro Yang <laughs> anti Beller. <laughs> so there you have it. Um, also, give us a follow on social media if you haven't. Uh, at Hard Factor News is our Twitter and our Instagram. Play, put lots of clips on there. And then our personals are at Hard, Hard Factor, Pat, Will, Wes, Mark, etc. cetera, uh, and at Intern Bubba. Uh, so give us a follow. Um, and if you haven't, check out our Patreon. 
two bonus shows a week. Very cool. Patreon.com slash hard factor. We're going to do trivia every month. Uh, if you're in the center of the car awesome. tier, half which is a, pack a friggin with Wes, blast, metal, metal you're going to get half, yeah, half a pack with Wes. Or, or if you join the Florida Man Friday tier, we are going to take on the sheriff, Grady Judd, uh, mm. which that will be coming up very soon, exclusively for Patreon at first. So if you want to get access to that um, and hear it as it comes out, you need to get on the Patreon. It's patreon.com slash hard factor. It's the cost of a beer a month. Buy us a beer a month. It's the right thing to do. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. And on this dozen trivia shit, I was sold out and set up. So don't come at me, uh, but do spread the word about hard factor and have a great fucking day.